Spenner here from Team Immunity, and we're about to get started on episode one of ACL Go Pro Series. And today we're going to go over Strife's point of view on Sanctuary CDF against Fury from Online Round 2. So here we see Strife pushing down Bond for these rocks. Doing a really good job of staying alive, not giving away this easy death. And you'll notice that just by staying alive and not giving away easy death, waiting for his teammates to you know, start shooting, paying attention to service tags, that they're able to get three down at the start, rocket, snap control and push really aggressive to the other team's base. So here you see one of his teammates just start on flag and so he makes like a really good choice of pushing to the other team's flag, help out a flag runner with the rockets and snap. Here, bit of a waste of a rocket. You know, that's, that's one of them kills that you really need to get. Once he's got that kill he's able to help his teammates out with a snap with back rocks so I just really want to stress that you really need to stay calm, take them extra 2-3 seconds to get that kill, you know, push down, make sure you get it, and yeah, just stay calm, it really is easy to get stuck in that mindset of freaking out. So here you see how three spawn, they get a group spawn at snipe, so really good by Strife here to push out and get a different angle. Unfortunately it gets cleaned up, maybe, again, could have used that rock, anything you can do to just stay alive for the extra 2-3 seconds, it really, really does help. So up here you see he's looking for his teammates, he wants to get these guys out of his base, really good. Bit of a sloppy demo there, he probably could have killed Demon there. Again, I would have gone for the different angle there, you know your team's going to be spawning at rocks behind you so they can watch that angle. Uh, it's really important that when you come off respawn that you guys need to focus on the same thing and make sure you drop that one kid and just immediately use your numbers and just stay alive and continuously just keep the number advantage. So there you see Strive was the last one alive and tried to delay his death and it ended up working really well. He killed one, got another one weak and lets his, allows his team to kill another one and you know potentially stop this flag, which I think I will by looking at this. Doesn't see there, just letting his teammates finish off the kill, really good. Now they're just going to bait this flag, yeah, don't have to stand directly on top of it, just get different angles with your teammates. And just let the other team push for it and get some easy kills, potentially get a counter cap. So you can see they're really pushing on this snipe side than that, which is really good. I just want to stress that it's infinitely times more important to push snipe side than pushing rocks. Uh, it's so easy to get stuck in rocks and have the other team spawn on you and not being able to get any help from your team once you push rocks, it's really not the best place to push. Whereas if you push snipe, you can sit in court, bait yourself. They have to run to you and you have to get an instant help by your teammates. So in here, as you can see here, Strife's doing a really good job. His team didn't have numbers, so he didn't push out straight away. But as you can see, he gets two, two down, so now he knows he can push a bit more freely. And they end up getting three down from that. So that was a really good play. You know, as soon as you don't have numbers, you have to stay alive, rank two. Or to stay alive on their side of the map. So that was a pretty good pull there. As you can see, like, he knew they were all weak under turret and all of his team were converging on top of him, so he decided to pull the flag and run at rocks, which is a good play. Flag taken. He notices that three of his team flag died, so this is a really good play, I like this. Just baiting the flag, waiting for his teammates to come off respawn, help him out. He doesn't die, no easy deaths. Really good play. As he sees here though, a couple of his teammates died on easy nades. Nothing really he could have done there, but again, if you were in his teammate's position, you've got to make sure that you stay alive with that respawn. Um, just, you know, use the flag as bait. The other team's going to freak out, start shooting the flag, nading it. Just use that, like, to your advantage. You can, you know, bait nades and all that kind of good stuff. So you can see, he gets snot. And they get two down here, so... Here, like, yeah, I'll just make sure you play a little bit more aggressive. You guys had two down for a little while, and you're still on your side of the map. But you end up killing cheese, which is a good play. So here you guys have got about three dead. Nice job there, listen to the call outs and you see a flanker come through. Yeah, now this is a bit of a tough situation that a lot of people aren't really sure what to do here. So he knows the flanker's there and he knows his team he can hear his teammate shooting. So he's in he's in two mindsets at the moment. So Basically, he does a good job of shutting down demons, no shields for a while, but again, you either really need to commit to killing him, or just leave him completely and help your teammates. You can't sort of be in both, because he's either going to stay alive and your teammates aren't going to get help, 
or you need to kill him, and even if your teammates die. So you really need to be a bit more decisive on that. Here you see three down for each team, and the flag is at the pillar, so he might be able to get a touch on this flag. Push a bit late, gives a nice start there, has it? So, that was a good play there, but again, I just think it's really important just to stay alive. I mean, it's good to get that snipe control back, but again, it's if that if he missed that snipe, he was as good as dead. So, so here is he. No, he doesn't really want to push flag because his team just went two down. Um, if I was in the position that he's in now, I would have preferred to drop to uh, cuts. And stayed alive. Just getting stuck at S2 is just eventually just going to lead to you getting naded or pushed down into court one shot, and then they can easily push and kill you. We like to do a bait on Boulder where we'll have one of us sit Boulder, and then we can have our teammates shoot from Snipe Bridge, the guys on their flags. And as soon as they have them distracted, you can jump up and Boulder onto their flag, get an easy kill, and then once you get that one kill on their side, it's it's so much easier just to stay alive and juke around. It's basically like the whole point of saying just juking around, being a thorn in their side. It's been really hard to kill on their side and letting your team push up and help you. So you can see they get two down, they got rock control, so this should be a cap. Once they push up, you gotta use these rockets to their advantage and you know get an easy cap. So that was really good there, playing really good attention to, you know, making sure you kill that last guy on your side. So here you see Strife, rocking the rocks and snipe again. So he knows it's a guy in car, he, he knows his team's been shooting at him. So he sees him here. That, that play there, uh, Rockets, I feel, are uh, a lot more important than Snipe on this map. Rockets almost guarantee you a cap. Um, I liked the first play you did right at the start of the game, playing aggressive with the Rockets. It was just like a little bit of a choke, but sitting back with the rocks and trying to snipe people off spawn, I, I just don't feel it's a good play. I think pushing up into ring 2 and just killing that guy in car first would have been much more helpful. I was getting smart there. Pretty frustrating when you're getting that straight, but nothing you can do with it. So, coming off the respawn, really good job again. You gotta make sure you get them different angles. He goes for a flank on the snipe, which is really good. Ends up getting the assass. He sees his team, kills another one. And he knows the last drawing rocks, so. He gets some good shots off. This looks like I should stop this. So here I would push really aggressive into the health pack. Uh, and just not let them push across turret, like Azic there. Like, now he gets this angle on Needles where if he sat there, it would have been quite difficult to kill him. But if you played a bit more aggressive there, got onto the health pack, you could have stopped him completely pushing over and pulled the flag straight away. So you Leg. notice the last two are in rocks and you stay alive, really good job. Leg, Come back for your new snipe. Pick up a nice snipe. You notice three of your team goes down, so it's really important to stay alive there. It was a good kill on the guy ring too, but again, if you missed that quick scope, it could have gone even worse. Uh, preferably I would have dropped down into your bond and just just try and stay alive for them two, three seconds more and let your teammates come off respawn and help you out. He does a good job listening to call out, getting the guys weak, letting his team finish him off. And just by doing that and staying alive, they get two down for no deaths, which is great. He's just uh, making sure that, you know, they kill them guys on their side. And now that they know that they're all off their side, they feel free to push up, pushing snipe side. Good again, they got rocket control. And they snipe. Couple of pocket rockets going off, I think. I can hear him. So there you can see there, his teammate decided to run at rocks, which I don't entirely agree with. Running at rocks is the most common way to run the flag on Sank, but if your team is all stacked, even if they're spawning on snipe side, if your team is stacked on snipe side, it's generally a better idea just to run it through your team wherever they're set up, which is either going to be rocks or snipe side. Uh, if your team is set up on snipe side and some of them do spawn snipe, I still suggest running snipe because if you kill the two guys at snipe, the next two teammates are going to spawn at rocks right behind you. So again, yeah, I'll just suggest running through your teammates constantly. 
So here they've got two dead and their flags away, so they're just making sure they don't get another touch on that, which is good. So here, there's two dead and last turret, that's nice, so... Really important, once you have numbers again, not to give away any easy deaths, which they don't. Right, they get the last two kills. And now it's, a t now it's a 3v2 again, so... I probably would have pushed out to kill that guy, Bon. Uh, if you kill that guy, there would have only been one left, so... I don't know, and... It's really important just to make sure you clean up the one-shots. When people get away one-shot, it's really... Frustrating. I think you guys are eventually kill him up anyway. So again, we see initial concept struggling a bit here with numbers, but staying ring two gets a bit enough before he dies, which is you know as good as a trade if his teams all pushed up around him. But unfortunately, I don't think they are at the moment. Get some nice shots there, and make sure they kill that guy on their side. Yeah, so they got two down. He's gonna push heavy on snap side. That's three down for a second. Last one this night. I think he got a little bit confused there and dropped down. I don't. I'm not really a fan of dropping into court when your team is sort of pushed on rocks and you've slayed on rocks, just because they're gonna spawn S2 nine times out of ten. Uh, I just prefer to just push straight into that snipe, block that snipe spawn, get them in court spawn, get some shots, and if you need to, drop back under their cuts and stay alive there. Then let your team finish off the guys that are weak and caught up. Doesn't see he's, he's he was keeping off jump up there, but at the same time he kind of wasn't really helping his team out in court. Again, you know, it's you gotta take that extra one or two seconds just to go help your team, kill that guy, and then as soon as you shoot the same thing and you, you guys end up killing one or two, you'll just notice that you'll start getting way more help. And it'll it'll be a lot easier just by shooting the same thing. As simple as it sounds, it's really important just to point that out. So there was a guy shooting from his court just now. Just watch out for your flank. I think he's running behind me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like they got rockets, but they end up killing him. Nice as soon as he gets that kill, he wants to play aggressive, which is what he does. Another nice headshot, that's three down. So, right now, if they kill this guy, it's a four dead, and they're gonna start calling out spawners. Should be on snap side of them. Flag Flag the drop was probably not needed. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, you could have got some shots on the guys in court and just. You know, call that guy out that got through to Bond and let your team deal with him. Eventually the spawners just don't have enough pressure on them, they're able to just push through and get to your side, but it looks like they run into a couple of god nades and end up dying. That was a good awareness there, just making sure that could have gone a lot worse if he didn't see Monks there. Monks would have killed him, he wouldn't have got this touch on the flag. Leg drop. It's always important not to play like narrow-minded. You want to always be thinking about, you know, what's not on your screen. It's really easy to just get stuck in what you can see when you got to really pay attention to what you can't. But yeah, it looks like they finished the game strong with 3-0, and these teams are able to pull out the victory. Overall, I think Strath did a really good job staying live ring two when his team didn't have numbers. He had some really solid shots. Made some smart decisions coming off the respawn of getting different angles. But again, I would have liked to see him pay a little bit more attention to his teammates as they were pushing up and just focusing on the same thing uh, instead of being in different mindsets. Uh, and to play more aggressively with, and, and even calmer with those rockets. Uh, thanks again for checking out ACL's first episode of GoPro. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you're as excited as I am about episode 2. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash IM underscore reach to get updates from us at MLG Anaheim. Thanks.